All right, Jay, so to wrap us up and put a bow on it, as you said, I want to go back to something you talked about on your solo show. Now, you talked about the NBA MVP race as it currently stands. We're about, what, maybe 40 percent of the way through the regular season. So just, 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 we just hit that part. Just hit yeah. That point. yeah, so we got, obviously, 60 percent left for the regular season, a lot of basketball left to be played. And you had mentioned your top three MVP candidates as it stood right now. Right. You had Braun at three. Nikola Jokic at two, and Joel Embiid at one. Ah, yes, that is correct. So I got to thinking about who my top three, really top five, but who my top three MVP candidates are um, in response to that, and that might surprise you, and one of which I'm really pissed at a lot of people who don't even bring this person up as a potential MVP candidate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Maybe, maybe piss is too strong of a word. Perturbed. Okay, you're so perturbed. I'm, I'm perturbed at you, Jay. What? At you. You, what? You're gonna represent. Why? <laughs> you know, yeah, MVP what? candidates leaving out, the, leaving out, every, yeah, leaving out everybody. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, my number three. And this kind of might surprise you. And this is kind of for fun, but it is somewhat true. Is I'm gonna say James Harden is my number three <laughs> candidate. All right. Because, thank you guys for joining us here on Unfair. <laughs> what? My season's in. He may have more MVP talk than you think okay. because he's going to get the credit if this team is able to lock up that number one seed and beat a lot of other good teams by either blowing them out or in close games, either one. I mean, he's going to lead the league in assists. He's already over 11, and he's at 22, 23 points a game, and we know that he could average 35 if he wanted to because he did that all the time at Houston. Didn't exactly get him anywhere. He went from an out-of-shape embarrassment a month and a half ago to leading this Nets team as a number two seed in the East, and they're going to get that number one seed from Philly and is the identity of the most dangerous team in basketball. So that's just a month and a half ago. So imagine what he can do over this next one to two months to three months before the end of the regular season. So I think right now people have to give serious consideration to James Harden as a number three candidate. Two, Joel Embiid, yes. I and I am not a fan of Embiid for a lot of reasons, mostly personal, off-the-court related, but he leads the team that's number one in the East right now. He's averaging 30 points, 11 rebounds, a steal, and an assist, but he's doing it in 32 minutes. So, I mean, he's... Ridiculous. Just ridiculous productivity r- r- with the time that he's been given. Uh, so Even adding to that, so this, yes, this is one thing I, I do want to add to add to why I even had Joel Embiid as my number one. And yes. we'll, we'll debate all of this stuff once you give your finish your list, but uh-huh. this is the biggest piece. He's on pace for a 50-40-90 season. Seriously. Wow. As a big man. Wow. 53 from the field, 39.7 from three, and just about 85 from the line. He may not get it from the Seriously. line unless he goes perfect for a while. Uh-huh. But he's playing. Why do you think he's playing the best basketball of his career? I got to give it to Doc Rivers on Doc this Rivers. one. I got to give it to Doc Rivers. He right. must have said something to him, a little fire in him, some capacity or something. Or he's just more healthy. Uh huh. Which is, we've always known that's been his biggest issue coming into the league, has mm-hmm. been health. I mean, and the rest of the team is still really solid, too. Ben Simmons is having a solid season, as is Tobias Harris. Seth Curry, who they got in free agency, is having a solid season. I mean, I really they like this. Are, I like this team I really a like lot. this Philadelphia team. I really yeah. do. And he had 50 uh, last game. Yes, he so. did. Yes, he did. All right, so my number one MVP candidate, who people are constantly disrespecting this season, and they've got to do some more to lock this up. But I think right now my number one MVP candidate is Steph Curry. Yeah. The Golden State Warriors, yes, they're the number eight seed because of him. Without him and this roster, with this roster, they're going to lose every game. Draymond Green, he can't score anymore. Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins, up and down. And you have no Klay Thompson. And even his rookie, James Wiseman, has been hurt the last couple of weeks. So he's at 30 points a game. And he's been carrying this entire organization. I think that they're going to probably get a five or six seed. And if they do, that's what I need him to do in order to win this. I think Steph Curry, who's had some incredible games this season, he's looked better offensively than he did during those MVP seasons, to be honest with you. I think that he's the number one, again, valuable. Without him, they're not winning anything. They're not winning a single game. Without Joel Embiid, they can win a few games. Obviously, without James Harden, they can still win. Kyrie and Katie, I mean, they were winning games before he got there. But without Steph Curry... Who else can you say this about? Without Steph Curry, his team would literally go O for the rest of the season. No, no, no. I agree with you on yeah. that. I, and, and I believe that he is. So th- this is the argument that you can have for Steph Curry and for 
one other person, okay. Damian Lillard. Mm. He hasn't had McCollum in a while. Mm-hmm. So CJ McCollum's out, and Portland is now the fifth seed. Yes. So the question what, what, we, we had to ask is, uh-huh. who's more deserving, Steph Curry or Damian Lillard? Still Steph Curry. I mean, think Damian, so? you know, again, he's going to get C.J. McCollum back. Steph is not getting Klay Thompson back, and he's not going to get the Klay Thompson we know back even next season because he's had, he's had two straight years of injury. So I think that there's still – there's a better team around Damian Lillard, what's left of his team, than with Steph Curry because in his cancer, he's been – he's come back to Portland – He's been good. He's been he's been without Yosef Nurkic as well. Melo has helped to carry some of that load as well. I've watched him from time to time. He's helped to carry that, and that is probably about it. <laughs> so that's a compelling point. <laughs> but I'm sticking with Steph Curry. Screw you. I'm sticking with Steph Curry. Uh, okay, that you is stick a compelling to him. Point. My number one is still Embiid. Number yes. two is Nikolai Jokic. Mm-hmm who is having a ridiculous season. He's also borderline on the 50-40-90 uh, stats-wise. He's ridiculous. He's playing ridiculous if basketball. They're in the seventh seed. If he can get them up to about a four, he, he might, might win, win it. He mm-hmm. might win it. And, th- and I think that's what hurts Luka with the argument around mm-hmm. MVP is that they're not playing very well. Like, no. Jokic is at 26-11-8. He's leading his team. My bad. So Jokic is at 26.6, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, 1.7 steals, and just un- just above half a block a game. Mm-hmm. He leads every statistical category for his team. <laughs> He's yeah. on top on everything. Oh, that's good. At 35 a game, he is, I mean, shooting-wise, let's go ahead and look at this for the season. He is right now at 50. From the 56 from the field, 40 from three, 87 from free throw. Jesus Christ. Damn. Right. So I made this statement on the solo. If LeBron James wants to take away this MVP trophy from any of these people, he can't do it. 50, 40, 90 season is what he has to do. He You've got to give it. us something you've never seen before. And right. I think that's what that's what helps the See, narrative story for Jokic mm-hmm. and Embiid. God. What big man have you ever seen go that? I've not. Braun can't do it. See, I feel disrespected in the sense of Braun should have won it last year. He was just dynamic last year. This year, I mean, he's got good numbers. He's at, what, about 25, 8, and 8. But he, there's something about him that just isn't popping off the screen like it normally does. Maybe it will as time goes on. And I can say this because the Lakers are on two to three nights out of the week. It's pretty easy, actually, if you want me to be quite honest. It's very easy to why it's not popping off the screen. Because he does it every freaking year. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, think about it. We've always given the MVP trophy to those that does something we feel like hasn't done before. Mm-hmm. Something dynamic. Something that just jumps off the screen. Like Westbrook triple-double season. Westbrook, exactly. Steph Curry mm-hmm. making 40-something, make, shooting over 400-something threes and breaking record. Mm-hmm. That that stuff, You you someone's shooting 47% from three roughly and... And you become a unanimous MVP by doing that and going 73-9. and nine. Mm-hmm. That's another piece that we got. We got something that we've never seen before. What from LeBron have we seen from him that we've never seen before? Right. That's the issue he's dealing with this year. Like right now, he's at 50 from the field, 36 from three, which is pretty darn good. For him, yeah. Yeah, because he's 34 career guy, but he's shooting 71% from the line. Always. And, and unless LeBron averages a triple-double for a season, which he's not going to do, mm-hmm. or he goes 50-40-90 in a season, he's not mm-hmm. going to do. He will never win an MVP again. Well, you know, one thing that could help him is what happened with Aaron Rodgers. The you're too old, you can't do it narrative. And they're around the same age, honestly. Yes, they are. So I think without Anthony Davis, and he's going to want to do this because he feels disrespected for the last seven years that he hasn't won it where he's felt like he's the best player in basketball. He's got to over this next month because you're probably not going to get AD back until at earliest this time next month. So the end of March. He's got to he's got to go on a run with this team. Let's say that's yeah yeah let's yeah. Say, let's say that's fifteen games. He needs to go at least thirteen and two. Yeah, oh, he's swing he has to. the narrative. He has to, but but that problem you run into with this is that as LeBron is getting older, his point totals are going down, mm-hmm. and that's always one piece that everyone uses to determine someone being an MVP. LeBron can lead the team in every statistical category, but if he's only averaging twenty. 24, 25 points a game, and Anthony Davis is behind him at 23, mm-hmm. they're going to say, oh, well, he's got Anthony Davis. That's the reason why they're doing so good. Mm-hmm. He's able to take a break. Now, 
if he turns up something and wins defensive player of the year, he'll win MVP yes. as well. That can help. That's there. That's his three. That's there's three avenues for LeBron to become an MVP mm-hmm. again. You know what? I'm gonna add a fourth. Okay. The fourth is to go seventy four and eight. What? <laughs> go seventy four and eight. He needs to have the best op- the best record in NBA history. Okay. He needs to go fifty forty ninety. Uh huh. He needs to. <laughs> it sounds absurd. Everything I'm saying, but Very. but tell me where I'm wrong in this. Tell me where I'm wrong in him not doing something that just jumps I mean, out on the screen to get those our are attention. Examples from a concept that is true that he does have to, because I mean, really, like you said, yes, I know he's LeBron. He's spectacular every time he touches the court, but to be even more spectacular than the LeBron that we've seen over the last sixteen to seventeen years, I don't see that in terms of making an MVP case. He's still great. He's still good enough oh, no, no, no. Great enough to win a championship. But I don't see what you're talking about. When you watch Jokic, when you watch Embiid, and look, look at the numbers behind that, it pops off. When I watch Steph, he's popping off the screen. LeBron, even for LeBron. Which, is being LeBron. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's the thing. He's, the got to be, he's got to be ultra LeBron. You have, to, you have to have the narrative and the storyline. The reason why everybody was ordaining Luka Doncic to being the MVP this year before the season started Mm -hmm. is more so storyline. He's going to take the Dallas Mavericks to the playoffs. He did great in the bubble, and they felt like he was going to just continue to ascend and average more points and really carry a team. Mm -hmm. That pops off because he's young, and he's doing something, a young person, that you wouldn't expect. Even though we've seen great young players do similar things, Mm -hmm. he's doing that new thing. LeBron has to. So your next thing is going to be defensive player of the year. He has to win defensive player of the year to really get people's attention. So, I mean, you go through that. He's got to have the greatest record ever. He's got to go 50, 40, 90. He's got to be defensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. That, that's your list of things. Honestly, I say we'll go with those yeah. three. That's the now, three they're only playing do. 72 games. Is that right? Correct. So, so this year he's six, not going to win it. There's no chance. Well, he, can't, he can't use the 64 and 8 record, we'll say, to win it. No. Uh, how many losses do they have? They, nine. They, already, they have nine. Okay. So, but 50, 40, 90. Tough. I see what you mean. Raise your free throw percentage, 19 points, 19 percentage points. Okay. Defensive player of the year. He's maybe more likely to do that than the other two. What was the fourth category? Uh, so it's um, best record in NBA history. Okay. Defensive player of the year. Uh-huh. 50, 40, 90. 50, 40, 90. That's it. That's it. I think, it? I think, I think, unless you mentioned something else, I can't remember. Well, I said that for me, he can swing the narrative. If he goes 13 and two over these next, this next month, or so worth of games without Anthony Davis. Yeah, uh, if he leads his team, if he leads his team to number one seed without Anthony Davis, then yes, there'll be a fourth one. That'll be his way of doing it mm-hmm. this year. And that's a real possibility because who's to say that they're not going to take extra precautions with Anthony Davis because well, they of, have to of just how his career has been. So they say, okay, he's going to be out for the next four weeks due to this calf strain, but that four weeks could because it's Anthony Davis turn into six, turn into seven, and he's approaching thirty, isn't he? He's probably yes. at around 28, 29. Mm-hmm. So he's not 22 or 23 where you can give him that four weeks and feel comfortable about him coming back and not risking re-injury. Well, the good thing is is that you can just get him to uh, – he's 27, actually. 27. So he's okay. born in 93. So uh, he's actually about to turn 28. He's got time. Mm-hmm. And at his height and his skill set, as long as he – as long as he – takes the precautions and takes his time to roll back, mm-hmm. I think he'll be fine. Should he change the way he plays in a sense? Like instead of – because of his guard skills, he'll drive to the basket. He'll play more out on the perimeter. Should they maybe play him in the post more because that's less drives, that's less falling to the ground, that's less risk of pushing off of that calf or that Achilles in the wrong way if you're not out there to do it? I mean, he's banging against like a Joel Embiid. You don't think that that would be I mean, well, somebody cautious. like Joel Embiid, you're going to want to pull him out anyway. So I'll, I'll say maybe not against the Embiid's or the Jokic's of the world because you want them pulled out of the paint. Right. But other centers that he can – that aren't at that caliber, maybe take them in the post more. I can see that. You know? I can see that. That probably probably would be a good option to, mm-hmm. to be able to do something. But like I said, at the same time, Anthony Davis' game is predicated around being like a guard. <laughs>